Alright YouTube, so I am beyond excited to do this video, maybe pun, maybe intended, but when it comes to The Walking Dead, that is a big part of this channel, but in a surprisingly small way, because we only have a couple of Walking Dead videos on this channel, like two if I'm not mistaken, but one of them happens to be my by far biggest video. And pretty much the entire point of that initial video was talking about the origin of the zombie outbreak or the virus outbreak and how did every single person seemingly on the entire planet get infected with whatever causes you to become a zombie. That's kind of the gist of the video. And it's a question that I've had at this point for over a decade. Now, when that initial video came out, it was 2018. So The Walking Dead like TV show wasn't yet 10 years old. But as it stands right now, we're moving into it being 12 years old. And that video is almost 4 years old itself. And this is a question that's probably been around for a pretty long time, considering the comics came out in, like, 2003. And for better or worse, depending on how you feel about the show, The Walking Dead World Beyond seems to have finally given us an answer. So that also makes this video a bit of a follow-up to the other Walking Dead video we did on the channel where we talked about World Beyond and characters within that show looking for a cure and how that might bring about like how it all started, the origin of the virus. So where this all comes from is the series finale of World Beyond, which has not aired yet. The episode comes out on December 5th, but AMC has it on streaming service, AMC+. Plus. This usually allows you to watch Walking Dead episodes about a week early, so it's already premiered on there. So what we have is at the end of the series finale, now I don't know if it's actually a part of the episode or if it's a post credit scene, because I've seen it kind of called both online. Either way, it's like a five-minute segment, so if it's a post credit scene, it's a massive one. So the scene opens up with a woman who we later learn is French in this dilapidated building that used to be some sort of lab. We see her pick up a beaker off the ground, pulls out a laptop out of her bag, unlocks a locker, gets out some external hard drives, and starts copying whatever's on there to her laptop. Now this by itself isn't super interesting yet just because we don't have any context, but what is interesting is she goes to walk away and second guesses herself, reopens up the laptop, pulls up a video, and it's my boy Dr. Edwin Jenner from Season 1 of the original Walking Dead show. And this absolutely blew my tits off when I first seen it because I've always been interested in this character. He's a really important character if you think about it overall. It gave us a shit ton of information in the first season. Now, obviously, as far as we know, he's dead. It doesn't, we didn't see him die on screen. We've seen the goddamn building blow up. So it's pretty much assumed that he's been dead this entire time. He could still be alive, though, as far as we know. Now, in the beginning part of this video, he talks about how they don't have any fresh samples over there in Atlanta. So if I'm not mistaken, that would mean that this video is taking place before TS-19. Which, in case you guys don't remember, TS-19 is Test Subject 19, which was a female scientist that Dr. Edwin Jenner was really close to. She got infected and allowed herself to be recorded so they could see how the process works. As I see it, is that the samples we have simply aren't fresh. There's just too many variables involved in how the clock affects them. So again, him saying that to me makes me think that that video is taking place before even Season 1 of The Walking Dead, since obviously TS-19 was a fresh sample. From where he goes on to talk about the experiments they're doing in France, and it's a lot of scientific speak, it's pretty interesting, but it's not necessarily important to what we're talking about in this video. But one thing that did stand out to me is he talks about how they're trying to jumpstart the circulatory system in hopes of resetting the brain, which I think is maybe a bit of a callback to Season 1, Episode 6, where we see how this kind of invades the brain like meningitis and eventually kills you and then reanimates you, so maybe the thought is that if they could somehow reset the brain essentially, maybe you wouldn't turn, I guess, maybe? I'm not entirely sure. Now as she's watching this video, a guy walks up behind her with a gun and asks if she's one of the doctors. Now throughout the rest of this entire video, Dr. Edwin Jenner is still talking in the background, and we will hear more from him at, towards the end, and it's the most important part of this entire damn thing. But I can't make out what he's saying as they're talking, because what they're saying is just kind of overlapping him. Now she goes on to confirm that she is one of the doctors, and that she's been on the run and hiding this entire time. And he asks her if she's from the Primrose team. And she says that she's not, and she's from the Violet team. Now, I don't think we know what this is yet, even based on the world beyond. I think this is something for the future, eventually. Potentially, the Rick movies, which recently I did a video on my second channel, kind of complaining about the Rick movies and how that hasn't happened yet. It's been a long time, but this seems to maybe be setting up some shit for the future. Now, past this, he asks where the Primrose team is, and based on what she says, I think this guy and his group came here and killed everybody that was here, but the Primrose team was not here. They were in Toledo, Ohio, for a conference. She confirms that she came back here in hopes that the Primrose team would have returned here and continued their work to obviously get rid of the zombie apocalypse. However, this shot we have right here is debatably the most important thing about this entire video because the spray paint graffiti in the top left in French translates to the dead were born here. As in the facility that they're currently in, this biomedical like research facility or whatever you want to call it, the DDMI seems to stand for Deputy Director of Military Intelligence. This place is where it all started. This is where the dead was born. 
So for the sake of this video, we're just going to refer to it as a virus. This virus that caused the zombie apocalypse in the Walking Dead universe seems to have been created within this lab. Now, how every person in the entire world got infected, I can't entirely answer. I don't know enough about biological weapons, but I'm assuming you could probably put something up in the atmosphere that would eventually spread around most, if not all, of the planet. So if we continue with this conversation, though, it implied that this virus was man-made and not like some act of God or maybe some force of nature or whatever the case. Some random parasite, potentially from, from space. I know everybody loves the space board joke, and it is a joke that Robert Kirkman made a long time ago. It's not that. It seems to be man-made. So is it a big cliche that it's some sort of scientific experiment or whatever that got out of hand and wiped out the planet? Sure, we've seen that a million times. Though we don't know if it's actually intentionally released. They could have just been experimenting with something and then it somehow got out of the lab and then spread across the planet or something. Or maybe somebody stole something from the lab and intentionally released it across the planet to infect everybody. I don't know. That remains to be seen, of course. And from there, it seems like he confirms that they actually imprisoned the people that were here, but that the Primrose team does come back here, that they will actually kill them. So I gotta remember to add that edit in. He then also goes on to confirm that the people working here started this, but also made it worse, which is a bit of a teaser for what's gonna be shown here at the end, which is some juicy bits. He then, of course, shoots her, and this is where things get very, very interesting. I want to know more about these variant cohorts you referred to in our last communication. We haven't seen anything like that here at all. Nothing close. So Dr. Edwin Jenner starts talking about variant cohorts, and what happens next, I shit you not, with zero hyperbole, completely changes the landscape of the Walking Dead universe forever. Because this woman reanimates and instantly runs at the door that the guy who shot her left through, which means that, for one, these are fast, aggressive zombies, but they're also retaining memories. Because otherwise she wouldn't know to go after that door, right? Because she just reanimated came back from the dead. Unless you remember that that's where you come in and out of, most zombies, when they come back, would just stand in place or kind of shuffle around unless they're provoked. Also, of course, the bitch is running, which is new for The Walking Dead. So now we have different variants and strains of zombies within The Walking Dead universe, but we also have fast, aggressive zombies similar to the Dawn of the Dead remake or, of course, 28 Days Later. Which would now make zombies a bit more of a threat again, because for the most part, through most of The Walking Dead, they're kind of in the background. Obviously, some people get killed by them, but generally, most of the conflicts within the show are people versus people. Which is honestly pretty standard for most zombie apocalypse-like scenarios. Like, it's generally people versus people, and zombies are just kind of set dressing, if that makes any sense. And I've just personally never been that much of a fan of the slow shambling zombie, because they don't feel like that much of a threat. Obviously, if there's a gigantic horde of them surrounding you, you're gonna die. But, like, if there's just a couple of them, you can just walk at a brisk pace or a light jog, and you're gonna get away from them because they can't run. But now we have running zombies. Now, smart zombies are actually not new for The Walking Dead show. They just shied away from them since season one. But in season one, we have the zombie that would pick up a brick or a piece of rubble, smash the glass on the, on the store. We also had the zombies that could climb a fence. They knew how to do that. And also, of course, we had Morgan's wife, who knew to go back to her old house. So now they're either adding in these like fast intelligent zombies to try to add something new to the show that isn't necessarily new or they're trying to retroactively make a reason or excuse for why there were intelligent zombies in the first season which might also mean that the intelligent zombies in the first season had this strange variant of the zombie virus. And I guess now that I'm thinking about it and talking about it, the zombies in the first season were kind of fast because they did you know, chase Glenn and Rick pretty aggressively for compared to what zombies do now. And actually, some other examples of some potentially intelligent zombies in the original Walking Dead show are like the bus zombies in Atlanta, and also like the church zombies in Season 2 that are just sitting in the church, sitting on the bus, which is something they maybe remember doing. And something I just want to throw in towards the end of this video that I was thinking about while making the video is, I wonder if they didn't do this like origin and cure shit with World Beyond in a roundabout way to sort of spite Robert Kirkman, because he said in the past that he never wanted to give an origin for the zombie apocalypse, it was also never interested in showing like scientists in a lab trying to find a cure, but we've seen that now with World Beyond. And I know within recent times, like there's been a lot of like behind the scenes legal shit with Kirkman and Frank Darabont and AMC. And whenever you have a show like World Beyond that is from the onset, they let us know there's a short-lived series, only a couple of seasons. And that within the show, we've now had people actively going for a cure, but also an origin story for the Walking Dead zombie outbreak, apocalypse, virus, whatever. Kind of makes you wonder if part of this wasn't done to just kind of spite its original creator. Who never wanted these things? So what I'll say here towards the end of the video to finally wrap it all up. We finally have an origin for the Walking Dead zombie virus for the television series. 
and it's not from the original creator. So you can take from that what you will. Uh, for now, I'm just going to accept it, whatever. We finally have an answer, something at least. I've been waiting for a long time for this. And look, I know that Robert Kirkman's not really a fan of these things. He wanted to keep it vague when it comes to his zombie series, but I personally love these kinds of answers. I, I'm not the biggest fan of like zombie movies that end with really no explanation as to how it all started. And again, as I said in the original video almost four years ago, when you make the claim that every single person in the world is infected with whatever this is, I need a bit of an explanation for that. And we finally have something, even if it is just you know, a biological weapon or whatever the hell. But my dudes, that is pretty much the video. So I'm not going to say that this is the last Walking Dead video we're ever going to do on the channel. But I just don't know what we'd do in the future. I'm not sure what would come up that would be video worthy. But we finally have an answer to a question I asked some years ago. So that's pretty interesting and kind of a nice conclusion. And as always with videos like this, my dudes, these take a hell of a lot more effort than my usual videos of just gameplay and me doing commentary over them. So I really appreciate any sort of traction on these videos. Views, comments, likes, shares if you share the video. All of it's very much appreciated because this video took a long ass time to make. But other than my dudes, that is finally the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and want to stay updated with more potential Walking Dead videos in the future. Turn on all notifications. Follow me on Twitter, Dash David YT. Add my Discord. A link to my social networks are in the description. End of the outro. Later, guys. It was the French. What? They were the last ones to hold out as far as I know. I used to care what people thought. But now I care more, I and mean, nobody out here's got it figured out. So therefore, I've lost all hope of a happy ending, depending on whether or not it's worth it. So insecure, no one's perfect. We spend it with no shame. We blow that like old train. We in here like Rogaine or leave it like Cobain.